Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Shining Archive, I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. There we go. What's Shonen Archive? I'm glad you asked. Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated our entire souls to watching every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to us in English from here till there is no more here. That's just the end point for us. <laughs> we'll figure out when that means when it happens. Uh, the main series we talk about is Gintama, with also being a Jujutsu Kaisen on the side, and Kurogo's Basketball. We swear to record it. So it we'll, we'll get back to it someday. And today, we're going to be talking about Gintama. It's been a bit, um, because I've been busy with work. But now we're ready to get back and talk about Gintama, which uh, only episodes 151, 152, 153, because I was pulled into a work meeting so I could not see 154 and 155, but we'll make up to that next week because Zen has already seen all five of these episodes. So we'll yes, just... I have seen all of them, uh, but that just means I'll be good for the next set. Yeah, that he'll still have five. I just have more to watch, but it just which is fine uh, for me because I like watching Gintama so it works out. But that's what we're going to be talking about. So let's go right into it with episode 151, which is the start of the Barber arc, which is two episodes related to a barbering, I guess, is the <laughs> the nicest way of saying it. Uh, let's get right into it. So this one actually starts with a, like, I don't know if it's a trailer, but it's like the beginnings of Kintama, which is the joke uh, Gintama, like... <laughs> Hostess, uh, host club version of Gintama yes. fe featuring, uh, <laughs> it is funny where it's, it's Gintama, where it's Gintoki, but he just has golden hair and he's called Kintoki and Shinpachi is called Shinpachi butt chin, which is just like exactly like Shinpachi, but he has a butt chin. <laughs> yep. He has a butt chin. Yeah. And in this one, it's like the beginning of this episode is like, uh, similar to the one in Gintama where uh, Shinpachi is being harassed, and this time he's being harassed at the host club because he was the number one host, and he's being harassed for it because he's not anymore. And uh, while he's being harassed, in walks in Kintama, and Kintama walks up to him and he says, "They." <laughs> it's very similar to when he says it in, in Gintama where he's like, I felt like there was something different about this man. And he, when he walks up to him, it looks like he's going to defend uh, Shinpachi, but instead he asked, where's your bathroom? <laughs> And he goes, that way. And he goes, oh, okay, thank you. And he just walks off, and Shibachi reacts like he only cared about the bathroom. <laughs> and that's the end of Kintama 4, ep Kintama episode 1. <laughs> and then it cuts into the actual episode, which features a new OP, which is the the seventh OP in um, Gintama called Stairway Generation. I know, because they keep saying Stairway Generation throughout it. So I figured that's a good way to remember it. And we go into this, and this episode is Gintoki is visiting his barber. So Gintoki visits his barber, and the barber keeps insisting that he gets a chonmaje, or or just a mage for short, which is what the, um, which I guess is what something a shogun would wear. <laughs> Spoilers for where this episode is going. But it's like one of those fancy haircuts of like a samurai times. Yeah, like the, like the bald on top with the ponytail over it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the, the bar, his barber is complaining that nobody really wants to have one of these. And when he finishes complaining, he asks Kentucky, what would you like? And he says, like, I would like a straight perm, please. <laughs> he, like, <laughs> specifically says, like, all these people just want straight perms. Nobody wants the ma the maje anymore. So what will it be, sir? Give me the straight perm. So do you and then it's really funny when he tries to talk him into it. Like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? He's like, listen, we keep having this conversation, old man. I'm not wearing the damn maje. <laughs> So they argue about uh, what is an appropriate hairstyle uh, Kintoki should get. And Kagura and Shinpachi are just kind of hanging out in there. Um, Kagura is um, reading manga, which will be important for later. But she also chimes in and says, like, yo, your barbershop sucks. And, <laughs> and he goes, like, yeah, it's because there's a new hairstylist that opened across the street. And they charge so much money. And their quality is bad. And I don't, I don't really like them. Um... 
it's been a real bummer to deal with it. And Gintoki's getting annoyed because he's like, you know, it would be really nice if you cut my hair the way I liked it, please. <laughs> uh, and Kagura's reading this manga series, which I can't remember the name of. It's like the... Oh, shit, what was it called? It's like a, a specific reference to a basketball player manga that's been going on since the 70s. And anyway, this manga is missing its seventh volume um, of Abu. That's the name of it, is Abu. Uh, the barber goes like, what? I thought I had all of it. And then Yutoki's like, you know what I thought? I thought I would get a haircut. That'd be really nice for you to give me a haircut, because <laughs> that's what I would like. Uh, and the barber's like, I can't believe that this is missing. I have to go fix this. And so he leaves his shop, and he says, you know what? You guys take care of my shop while I'm gone. I'm going to go find the seventh volume of this manga. And as he leaves, Gitoki goes like, you care more about the stupid manga volume than you do giving somebody a haircut? Um, so now the, uh, the the crew is in charge of the shop, uh, and they see Kondo as he walks in across the hair salon. He wants to get like a full-on makeover done, but he's acting really sheepish. And he's kind of acting like, like, oh, should I go in here or should I not? And eventually... Um, a dude from inside the other place comes out and says, like, hey, can I help you, sir? And he basically says, like, I'm looking for a new uh, barbershop, but I don't know if it's the new place. And then he, the guy says, like, ah, yes, you're looking for the barbershop that is across the store, that is across us. It's right over there. And he basically gets denied. Kondo tries to make it seem like, oh, you know, maybe this is the place that I want to go in. And the guy goes, is like... <laughs> Uh, he keeps making excuses, like, the first excuse is that we take people's hair and we try to make it into pork products or something, and then Kanto's like, I, you could take my hair and make it into pork products, he's like, I actually, well, now we just make hairbrushes, um, and he goes like, you can make my hair into a hairbrush, and then the guy finally goes like, can I just be real with you? Uh, you're making people very uncomfortable. <laughs> and you see that inside there's, like, a woman who, there's two ladies who just feel bothered by Kondo. Uh, in general presence, and he goes like, "Sir, you're gonna have to leave, or we're gonna call the police." And then Kondo, <laughs> before he gets uh, thrown out, so he, he musters a, uh, "I'm the police." He's like, "Old man, please leave. You're bothering everyone." And at this point, a giant crowd of people have gathered, and they're all booing at Kondo, basically going like, "Boo, you suck. Uh, go somewhere else, a creepy old man." And again, Toki and uh, Kagura and Shibachi have been watching all this go down, and they're saying, like, that is the most depressing thing I've ever seen. Uh, how can we, can we, is there anything that we can do for Kondo? And Kentoki says, the best thing that we can do for Kondo is to ignore that any of that happened to Kondo <laughs> and act like none of that happened at all, and that will be the best for him. But Kondo ends up walking, walks into the barbershop, and he's super depressed. Uh, they put on fake disguises so that they won't, so that Kondo won't realize it was someone who knew who just co watched him completely get like emasculated in front of everyone. Uh, and as Kondo walks in, uh, Kentoki tries to deny him at the door, and he's basically saying like, "Oh yeah, no, we're booked up. You can't go in here because they don't know anything about uh, making giving makeovers at all." Uh, and Kondo goes basically like, "Oh." I've been denied from a shitty place like this. I guess there's no place for me. <laughs> and at that point, um, Shinpachi says, like, no, 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 all our bookings just got canceled. Please come in. Because he couldn't bear the thought of Kondo just going off and leaving him at his most uh, trying times and uh, making him feel even worse than he already does. So uh, Kondo says that he wants to get a full-on makeover. And he says... <laughs> Gintoki tries to explain it in street fighting terms. He says, like, so basically you want to go from Blanca to Zangief? And Kondo goes, no, I'm just going from... I'm going from a character nobody uses to, ca to a character nobody uses. <laughs> so he goes, like, oh, so you want to go from E-Honda to Guile? And he's like, yes, I want, he's like, what I want is an E-Honda to Guile. And Kentoki says, oh, so you want to change nationalities? And Kondo <laughs> goes, yes. <laughs> and goes, okay. Uh, so they, they try and give him Guile's haircut. And he goes like, no, what? I don't want Guile's haircut. He's like, you just literally mentioned Guile. It's like, you were the one who brought up the fucking Street Fighter 2 reference. I don't actually want to look like Guile. Um... So as they're dealing with this, that's when um, 
uh, uh, Katsura comes in. And Katsura is looking to get a <laughs> a haircut because he heard that there's a talented barber in, and he wants to. He hear that it's in here, so as he goes in there, um, Kintoki tries to deny him, and it's at that point uh, uh, they try and kick him out. And Kagura, go, not Kagura, uh, Katsura goes like, "I know you. You're the charismatic hairdresser everyone's talking about. I can see it." And then <laughs> Kintoki very quickly goes, "No, it's not me." And then he goes like. I can see that you have the eyes of a samurai. And then he goes, it's because I'm a samurai. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, like, it feels like I know you. He's like, it's because you do know me. <laughs> he tries to very clearly just get him out of here. Uh, but, uh, uh, Katsura is stubborn and he's let and he gets himself in there. They try and hide him from Kondo uh, by putting a bunch of shit on Kondo's face. Because uh, obviously if Kondo and Katsura see each other, they call him, they call him like their eternal rivals. But it's because Kondo will have Katsura arrested if he sees that Katsura is in here. Um, so, Kentucky and Kagura are both serving them. And then they end up putting a bunch of shampoo on um, Katsura's head. He goes, like, just keep the shampoo here and it will seep into the hair of the skull and you'll be fine. And then Katsura goes, like, I had no idea that's how it worked. And he just like stays silent for the rest of the episode until later on in the until the end of the second episode. This is the last you hear from Katsura, basically. And so they feel like everything they have them both kind of under wraps. And then Kintoki says, "This is the perfect time for us to run away." And right when it looks like they're ready to just like book it and leave the hairdressing style behind, Matadaira shows up and he has the seventh volume of Abu with him, which he's looking to return. Um. And that's when it's the return of uh, the Shogun himself, the Tokugawa, I think it's his name is Shigi or Shigi. How do you pronounce his name? I just remember they call him the Shogun, but his actual name is something else. But the Shogun is here. He has not been here since the last oh, time. Oh, Shige Shige, I think it's Shige Shige. Shige. Okay, that makes sense. But he is the Shogun and the Shogun is here and he wants to get his, uh, his Maje redone. And that's where they ended off with them going, oh my god, it's the Shogun! <laughs> and that is the end of this episode. Zen, from what you can remember, what did you like about it? Uh, it's good. I like the Street Fighter jokes. They're funny. I like when he when he puts all the shampoo on Katsura and he's like, just stay there. And he's like, well, alright. <laughs> and he's just it's there for like forever. Um... The, the Shogun bit at the end is funny, because I was like, oh, because uh, Kondo's boss is coming in. That's funny. And then it was like, no, it's actually the fucking Shogun <laughs> that comes in. Um, and I like the way that they're like uh, trying to get him out. And then the Shogun is like, no, I must see how the common people <laughs> live. Yes. And they're like, fuck, no. It's so good. It is really good. Um this episode is really funny. It's a. Uh, I really like the starting up with uh, with Kintoki. I thought that would that part was good right there. There's a brief bit where some kids are playing Beyblade. Beyblade for some reason. It doesn't really factor into the episode, but I wanted to make mention to it because it took me a while to go like, were Beyblades even out when Gintama was out? And then I looked it up and I saw that Beyblades had been out since 1999, and it hit me that Beyblades have been around since 1999, but of course, if you follow the lore of Beyblade, everyone knows that Moses parted the Red Sea with a Beyblade. <laughs> so, <laughs> so really, Beyblades have always been with us, deep down inside. Um, there's a bit where, um, when uh, the, the one of the mangas that Kagura is reading is called Gogo 17, which is a parody of Gogo 13, and in it, there's an epi- there's a uh, the bit where he's like, this is right where uh, Golgo has to go fight Shen Long, which is the dragon, <laughs> the, the the dragon from Dragon Ball. <laughs> Just randomly, they decided to go like, ah, yeah, no, he's fighting Shen Long now, which I thought was also funny as they eventually get into the Street Fighter bit because it reminded me of the old Ryu quote, which was, "You must defeat Shen Long to stand a chance," which is a uh, yes. A very Famous mistranslation. <laughs> one of the greatest mistranslations out there. It's supposed to be dra- you're supposed to be able to beat my dragon fist, but they just yeah, up. you're you're my sure you can to stand a chance. Basically, yeah, but they completely butchered it and ended up causing accidentally the master of Ryu to be formed from that moment by complete accident. 
I almost died when Kondo mentioned I'm going from an unplayed character to an unplayed character. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, fucking Blanca and Zangief means in shambles. <laughs> and then his ultimate, uh, he was like, oh, so for a good change, you want to go from E Honda to Guile. And I was like, that is still, people still mention that to today. <laughs> it's like, oh, you want to go from a, uh, from a decent charged character to actually one of the best charged characters, which is Guile, which is really funny. And, uh, yeah, in general, this episode was really funny. It's it's funny because I realize like there's a lot of like episodes that are focused around barbers. Actually, maybe this is the second one. It reminds me. I don't know if you've ever seen Atlanta, the the TV show. Have you ever seen it? No. There's an episode where one of them has to deal with his barber, and it actually is very similar to this. Where Kentucky, there's a bit where Kentucky's like, "I would just really like you to just cut my hair," and his barber gets distracted and he has to go off. And that's actually very similar to the premise of that episode. Where um, Paperboy goes in and he's like, I need to get my shit done by my barber. And he has to, like, he it's like 22 minutes of him, like, being taken around the hood as he tries to just get a haircut. And this barber just refuses to actually do his job and cut his damn hair, which is all he wants. And that's basically the premise of this one. So I just thought that was funny. And yeah, it's a good episode and a good start of this one. I forgot the name of this episode is actually called is also called "The Conversation with a Barber During a Haircut Is the Most Pointless Thing in the World." Yeah, <laughs> which is a really good title. It is. It is a fantastic title for what is going on. Uh, and yeah, it was really good. Uh, let's go on to the second part of it, which features some more jokes. And I also like the Shogun returning because I was like, ah, I remember the show. I find, I think the Shogun's very funny. Uh, and based off of the next episode, I would say that every single time the show has showed up has been a fantastic episode. <laughs> let's go into it. So, uh, we start with, uh, a quick look at Kintama episode two, which is parodying when the first time they met, uh, Kagura. Uh, and yeah, they meet Kagura through this and it's all good. And let's go into the actual episode. So in this one, the Shogun is, uh, oh wait, I remember, there's a quick dig at, um, oh shit, before we go into this, I just wanted to mention, the ED, the, there's also a new ED for this one, I thought it was very cute, the, the ED of them, on, of Gintoki on the motorcycles, like the world goes on a little, it, like a little cutouts, I thought it was very cute, and I really liked it. That's all. That's all I really needed to say. But I needed to get it out there because I, I really like those style VDs. Um, so yeah, they they start this episode by saying that like th- this week in the Gint- Gintama Kai, we're going to be showing a re-added director's cut in 16.9 HD remastered version of the infamous episode 151, which is parodying Dragon Ball Kai, which had just been started uh, going out there, which Dragon Ball Kai was them re-releasing episodes edited um to remove a lot of the filler <laughs> and also to make it 16.9 in hd and i liked uh shinpachi's thing of saying like first of all um what do you mean the infamous episode 151 and the one we had last week is nothing <laughs> in- <laughs> there's nothing infamous about it also we're still not 16.9 at all <laughs> Like, even for this bit, talking about, like, oh, yeah, remastered, they didn't make it 16.9 at all. And he goes, like, okay, let's just do a quick rundown of the previous episode then. So, yeah, the previous episode, they they come up. The the, the Shogun is here. Uh, Matsudaira leaves him to go hang out at the Hostess Club. And he basically, like, he does a really, sh- <laughs> he does a really shitty job of protecting the Shogun. Because he's like, eh, whatever, you're in disguise, you don't need anybody to be next to you and protect you. And then Gintoki's like, he does! What are you doing? You're so terrible at your job! And he just goes off to go hang out at the host club. And the Shogun also mentions that he doesn't want to go to the host club because he didn't come as a someone... He didn't come in a disguise to go deal, to live the nightlife. He came to go see how the common people lived. So he wants to get a, com- <laughs> a common person ma- uh, Maje done. Um... So they start to go like, oh man, we need to cut the Shogun's hair. But they're all very like uh, nervous. Um, as they said, like if we fuck this up, he's going to cut off our heads and they're going to leave us out there. And there's actually a shot of their heads being cut off, eaten, being eaten by crows. 
and Shimpachi vomits into a bucket and he's super nauseous. Um, Kagura goes to give the Shogun a haircut and in the middle of talking to him, she, she throws up on him uh, and they get her away from it because like, why'd you throw up? Because like, ah, uh, I ended up smelling the, the vomit from Shinpachi and it got to me, but it should be okay. None of it landed on him. And then they look at the Shogun and on the Shogun's head, there's a Naruto. Um... And she goes like, oh, that's the from my ramen lunch that I ate, which would explain why it's on his forehead. So they try and wipe the uh, the Naruto off the Shogun's face, and instead it ends up creating two of them that land on his eyes. <laughs> and they said, like, yeah. what, what are they doing? They, they're doing the shadow clone technique on <laughs> on his face. He's like, no, no, there were just always two Naruto's. He's like, oh, this is so bad. And look at him. He's got the Sharing gun. He's going to try and take my special technique. Yeah, he's going to try to steal my special moves. And then Shibachi says, you don't have any special techniques to steal. The Sharing gun would be useless against you. That's why Bandai Namco is having a hard time, because they can't put you in any fighting games. Which is so true, because like I've mentioned multiple times, Gintoki's main uh, special attack in like the not in Jump Force, but the game that came out Jump um, Jump Versus, I think. Um, one of his special move is the Kamehameha. <laughs> that <Yeah>. is, <laughs> the man has no special moves. He's just not someone built for that. So I really felt it when they <laughs> called him out for not having any special moves. Um, so they try and um, so they end up they, they end up deciding that they're going to just like with a razor carefully peel it away from the shogun, and they get it off of them. But then they end up cutting off the shogun's uh, maje instead, uh, along with it, uh, <laughs> to try to b- pretend like everything's okay. Gitoki throws it out the door. It says like, "How dare you keep uh, golden retriever shit uh, in <laughs> in the barber shop?" And then Shifaji goes like, "What are you doing? Why are you <laughs> you're delusional? You think that it's a, the problem doesn't go away if you just pretend that there's shit on <laughs> the floor? All you've done is throw away the hair." Um. Uh, so they decide to go like, you know what? Um. We we can fix this. We can just what we're gonna do is just we're just gonna give him a new maje. So what they decide to do is that they're gonna he's gonna pull back the shogun's hair, but it's too small and it can't do it. So he's like, no, nah, don't worry about it. I can pull it back, and he pulls it back super hard to the point where it's super tight around his face, and he makes this face where it makes it look like it's unrecognizable. And when he does it to him, he's like, oh yeah, look at him. Is he happy? Is he mad? I can't really tell. <laughs> <laughs> because his face has just been so contorted by everything. They realize it's not going to work because the, the Maja is too tiny. So uh, they decide to get just put back his old one uh, and, and glue it on him and just put it back. But at, by this point, the Golden Retriever has taken it and Kagura says, you know what, don't worry, I got it. And she chases after it. Uh, <laughs> Please don't take me down, YouTube. For what I'm about to explain. <laughs> Gintoki makes a new uh, Maje for the Shogun. Uh, and he makes it out of some hair that he finds. He says, like, oh, I constructed it together. And when he says that, it shows, like, a Gundam. So he goes, like, okay. So he puts it together and he puts it on his head. But it starts to, like, come undone. Because it seems like the hair, for whatever reason, is not very, like, um, strong. And he goes like, Weird "Where did hair. yeah, yeah it's, there's something wrong with the hair?" So Shimpachi says, "Where did you find this?" And he's like, "Oh, I found it in a local bush." And then he points to um, Kondo's crotch, who has been sleeping this entire time, and he took it from his pubic hair. <laughs> so he's yeah, he shaved <laughs> Kondo's pubic hair. <laughs> he made, he just took it off of him. He took off his pubes and just put it on the fucking Shogun's head. <laughs> And then this begins to think of, like, why would you, <laughs> out of all the places to take it from, why would you take it from there? And he tries to explain this logic, but it just doesn't uh, doesn't work out at all. So he says, like, you know what we need to do? We we can just take it from Katsura. And he goes, like, all right, you got it. And he starts to immediately go for Katsura's crotch. <laughs> and he goes, no! His hair! Just take it from the top! <laughs> you only need it from the top. 
<laughs> so he goes like, oh, okay, you're right. You know what? We can't just take it from the top. It's, it's fine. He goes like, K- Katsura has so much hair, it's not going to matter if you just take some from the sides. He's like, all right, let me take some of his hair. He immediately goes to cut his bangs. <laughs> so it's right in front of everything. He goes like, no, what are you doing? So then uh, um, Gintoki goes like, well, it's fine. Well, now I feel like it's a little lopsided, so let me actually fix it. They cut almost all of Katsura's hair. But now they have plenty to make the the Maje for him. So what Kentucky ends up doing is that he takes Katsura's hair and then he makes a wig and then he puts it over Kondo's crotch. And he makes a little, like, hair thing for his dick. It is the most ridiculous thing because there's so much like sensor going around this penis region, and he goes like, "No, what are you doing? You're supposed to be making a maje." He's like, "Don't worry, I got it." And he puts the maje on top of the dick. And he goes like, "I got it right here." He's like, "No, what are you doing? You're going so wrong." <laughs> Um, and then he decides to, a Kagura finally shows up. She's here to save the day. She said, I got it. I've got the solution to our problem. He goes like, okay, and I got it in this bag. And he goes like, okay, let's just put it on his head. Let's go. And they put it on his head and they put something on top of the Shogun's head. And the Shogun's head, the first thing they say is, Shibachi goes, why is it pixelized? And they realize that Kagura has picked up golden retriever shit because Kentucky was calling the hair piece golden retriever shit. So she took up some shit and she said, it took me a real long time to find shit that looked exactly like his hair. <laughs> so they put it on top of his head. And at this point, after they've put it, they've glued it on top of his head. They put it on there. And at this point, Gintoki picks up, um, Kagura and, uh, <laughs> Kagura and Shinpachi, and he books it out of the barber shop, not to be seen anymore. Um, and as this happens, uh, Kondo wakes up and he goes like, "Hey, what's going on?" Both him and Katsura wake up from it, and the Shogun is crying. He's <laughs> like, "What is going on here?" And the Shogun yeah. still has his <laughs> peeled back face. <laughs> And he goes like, I never knew it was so hard for the common folk to get a much. Yeah, he doesn't realize what happened. He's like, I can't believe society has degraded so much. He's like cr- crying over the plight of the common man. <laughs> and so he leaves it crying and says, I'm gonna, there must be reform. And the barber, before he leaves, the as they're leaving, he's like, man, I don't know if that guy was a- angry or sad. I couldn't tell because of his face. And they see each other. They yell at each other. And we get an aftermath of what happened. And they said, based on his experience, the Shogun has reformed the barber shop so that it can be well done. And the barber returns to his barber shop which is being uh, redone and rebuilt. Uh, he has the seventh uh, copy of the manga in hand, and he says, thanks to the reform, the barbershop is now prospering. And you can see that the barber is like going, what What the hell happened while I was gone? <laughs> He's very confused about what's going on. His barbershop is made the number one in uh, Noeda, Noedo after the mas- makeover, and they say they are still looking for the mysterious barbers that gave him that, the the unsung heroes that made this all possible and they had they it ends with a wanted sign <laughs> which features uh them in their uh in their fake hair that they use to uh pretend to not be themselves and the episode ends uh right there and uh holy shit Hazen, how'd you feel about this episode <laughs> uh it was kind of stupid for a while right? yep 100%. It was kind of stupid for a bit. Like when Kagura got the dog turd and they put it on his head, I was like, for God's sake. Um, but then when he starts walking away <laughs> and he's like, reform is needed to, <laughs> to, to aid the common people in their quality of life, he's like, this is no way to live. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was one of the funniest jokes in all of Gintama, I think. It's so good. <laughs> the fact that that was his takeaway after dealing with everything. So it makes you feel like, so he just felt all of that. And you now he just feels like this is just how the common people live. This is how they get their hair cut. <laughs> this this can't stand. This can't be. It one hundred percent is what makes that episode. The Shogun's reaction to this, which is I feel the same thing when the Shogun last appeared, is that I feel like a lot of the jokes would be like, eh, whatever. It's the very basic joke, but it's the fact that he's like, taking it the way that he does is what makes it so much funnier. <laughs> Like, the the fact that it's him, and the way that he's seeing it, it's so funny, and oh god. that That's easily the funniest part of the episode, but I also really like the joke where, um, they, they're like, why would you take Kondo's pubes when Katsura's hair is, like, his entire body length? Just take Katsura's hair. And it's like, okay. And he goes to take Katsura's pubes, and they're like, no! <laughs> off his head! So then he cuts his bangs first, and they're like, why the fuck? Would you go for the bangs? <laughs> that, so that, it's, that entire sequence was so funny. And then when he takes the hair and he makes a little wig for it. <laughs> and then he makes a little munch in the foot of the wig. <laughs> I also I thought it was really funny when Katsura's like sitting there. And he's like, there's so much shampoo in my eyes. And he's like, no. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, stay there. This is the entire way they keep him there is just by pure saying, just let the shampoo do its job. It's really funny. It is a very dumb episode. I also liked it when they were talking about the Shogun. It's like, I remember the Shogun. His radiance. His his demeanor. His humble penis. <laughs> Because there was a lot of jokes about the last time he was there is that his penis is very small. <laughs> so I thought it was funny to bring it back up. But yeah, the that joke at the end, oh my god, it got me so... Even talking about it now, it's so funny. I, it, <laughs> it hurts to think about, but yeah, really well done. I really like the uh, any time the shogun has shown up now <laughs> i think they don't use them very often because i feel like if they uh use them too much it's like the secret sauce you can only have the secret sauce every once in a while and every time you have yeah, it yeah you can't like, get like used to it yeah, yeah exactly so the the rate of which they use him i think has been very well done so far if it just every once in a while he shows up and he shows up when i'm not expecting it and i just go oh this is great <laughs> then i think that's when it's going to be best worked out because yeah that reaction oh this is how the common people live. And the way he says it with tears in his eyes. And his face pulled back completely. is just so fucking good. Uh, but that was his episode. And also the name of this episode is called The Heavens Created Chonmaje Above Man Instead of Another Man. Which is apparently a quote from... Um, they mentioned it here. A phrase by Yuchi... Fukuzawa, heaven doesn't make a man better than others, nor does it make a man worse than others. All men are created equal. Uh, which I would never have gotten that reference in a million years. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this is a good episode. I also really like the Sharingan bit. Because anytime they can make fun of uh, Gintoki's lack of, of a special move is funny to me. Because it's true. It's, it's I've also brought it up like when we were talking about when he's doing that fight, when he's just like sword fighting. Doesn't really have a special move that he can call his own. He just kind of fights. Uh, yep, yeah, that's this episode. Do you have anything else to say about it, Zen? No, no. It was I. It almost went into the category of like this is too much toilet humor for me until the end, and then I almost fucking died. <laughs> <laughs> the ending might have literally ended my life if I laughed anymore. It was just. Mm, the cherry on top, the thing that sells it. It's the part where they say the aristocrats. <laughs> this is finally I understand the joke. This is the part. It's when the man stubs up and cries for the common people. <sighs> now let's go to episode 153, which to be fair at this point, I feel like I was heavily distracted because of all the things I had seen previously. But let's talk about it. 
It's the episode's name is for episode one fifty three is Sleep Helps a Child Grow. <clears throat> so we start off with a previously on Kintama, which is episode three of Kintama. It looks like something bad has happened to Shinpachi Butchin, and he is lamenting the fact that he has a butchin. Uh, he says, <laughs> "This is no so way. Funny. This is no way for the number one host to live." And we will find when out. He's in the car, and he's like, "What's wrong with a butchin?" <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Very good, and I, I will. You already know the season finale, but I'm looking forward to the season finale of uh, Kintama next episode when I see it. But this episode, uh, Kagura can't fall asleep. Uh, she's having a lot of trouble going to bed, so she goes to Kentoki's room and wakes him up. And um, at first, Kentoki tries to ignore her. Uh, she's also very creepily like saying, "Hey, I can't sleep." Like it's borderline horror movie esque the way she's looking at him with the her sunken in eyes and everything. It's terrifying. Um, so she asked him to switch rooms with her because since his futon looks nice and fine, um, and she just kicks him out of his futon. So Kentucky uses another futon and starts uh, sleeping next to Kakagura, but she still can't sleep. And Kentucky's pillow smells like an old man. So she asks to switch places with him again. Uh, Kentucky tells her to shut her eyes and then sleep will come naturally. But then Kagura starts to say, like, it will not work in questions about sleep and the fact that you have to close your eyes. You are staring at fluid in your eyelids. And she starts having, like, this weird, like, trippy visual to go along with, like, the stars and everything that goes around with trying to sleep. And, um, finally, Kentucky says, the reason you can't sleep is because you don't do anything in the day. And most people who work hard can sleep easily. So Kagura says, like, okay, I'm going to go run for, like, 50 miles. And <coughs> Kagura says, uh, don't fall asleep before she comes home and finishes her run. Um, uh, so Kentucky does end up falling asleep. And after some time, uh, Kagura wakes him up. And she can't sleep because uh, she's breathing so fast. And the reason is is that because she was r running 50 laps around the town. And Kentucky says, like... <laughs> all you've done is dirty the futon and you know you need to take a breath uh, need to take a bath <clears throat> and she says like no i don't need to take a bath i just need to take i just need to go to bed right now um and says so she ends up at, and it turns out that she's hungry says if you're hungry then uh Kentucky says how now are you hungry and asks her that how funny to do many things at one time in an irritating voice? I don't remember. I, he's just irritated with her at this point. Uh, she says, it's not my stomach growling. She's farting. And then Kitogi asked her to take a bath <laughs> and get a meal ready so you can go to sleep, you fucking goblin person. <laughs> uh, and finally, after some time, uh, Kitogi wakes up again. And this time, Kagura's just breathing heavy. She says she can't sleep since her stomach is too full. And Kotoki asked her if she ate all the food that she kept for breakfast. And she says she isn't required to work tomorrow and she can stay awake as long as she allows him to sleep. She agrees, but she asks if she can turn on the radio, which Kotoki agrees. And then finally, that seems to be enough. And we get into this story. Um, the program on the radio says uh, a story that will make you cry in three minutes. It's a touching story about a girl and her pet dog, uh, who I think the pet's dog is named Jerry. And they talk about Jerry, and they talk about, like, oh, here's my life with Jerry. And um, we, I would love him, and he would come around with me all the time. And then, But then one day, our family lost everything, and I was smart enough to know that the one thing I had to give up was I had to give up Jerry. So she tells Jerry, which is was something that she always says that Jerry always, always listened to her, and she would tell him to wait, and she would wait for him to come home, and then she would see him. They would see each other again. So they're at, she goes to try and abandon him, but Jerry is not like paying attention, and he still wants to chase her, and so she finally tells him to wait, and Jerry decides to wait, and she goes off, and she abandons the dog, and then months later, her family life is stable now, so she decides to go back to where she left Jerry, hoping to not see him there, because she in her mind says, like, well, hopefully Jerry didn't actually just wait for me, and that he, someone adopted him, and Jerry is fine, and Jerry is happy. 
that's not what she finds out. She finds Jerry, who has at this point been completely, like, <clears throat> has basically starved, um, and he is dying. Uh, the reason is, is that an old man comes up and says, like, oh, yeah, that, uh, I see you've met the, the dog. Yeah, that dog has been here for so long, and so many people would try and come up to adopt him or feed him, and the dog would just say no. He's probably just waiting for his owner. Uh, and at this point, she goes to go pet Jerry on the head, and she says, like, Jerry, um, wags his tail, and then he just stops moving, so Jerry dies. Um... And the old man says, like, uh, and then uh, she basically says to the old man, I was Jerry's owner. I'm responsible for his death. I've killed him. And he goes, like, well, it's fine. You know, maybe he just wanted the. maybe he was happy to see his owner one last time. It's like, how can you know that? How can you know that's how Jerry feels? And then he says, uh, he goes, like, well, Jerry is here with us now. And she's like, what do you mean? He's like, he's right behind you. And then it's a jump scare. It turns out he's Jerry all along. <laughs> <clears throat> and then this wakes up uh, Gitoki and he immediately punts the store, the radio. <laughs> and he goes, what kind of story is that? It was so heartfelt and then it turned into a horror story out of nowhere. <laughs> and he looks to Kagura and Kagura has fallen deep asleep. And he goes like, okay, great. And now I'm going to go to bed. But then whenever he tries to go to bed, he feels like something's haunting hung- him. And he keeps hearing the old man voice going like, I'm here too. And he sees like Jerry from behind. Um, and he keeps thinking that Kagura is doing it to him on purpose. Um, <clears throat> and Gintoki ends up staying awake for the entire night. And that is the end of the episode. <laughs> and yeah. There you go. How do you feel about this one, Zen? Uh, it was good. It was pretty funny. Yeah, I mean the... Uh, the the end bit again was really funny when he was like, "What the fuck?" and then it puts <laughs> Kagura to sleep, so he's like laying there horrified all night because she won't let him sleep. Yeah, basically, um, it's funny. I like the bit where he's like, Is "Your stomach seriously growling?" She's like, "No, I'm farting right now." <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, it, it was definitely, like, just an episode of, of Silly. But it was good Silly. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it was a very interesting premise as well. I I immediately understood Kagura's feeling. I don't think there's anything quite as bad as wanting to sleep and being unable to sleep. It sucks so much. It, it really feels like you're in hell the entire time. You're just trying to go to bed and you can't go to bed. And you're just staying awake and you feel like an idiot. And then you look at the time and you're like, I have to wake up because I have obligations. I have work. I have shit to do in the morning. And all this staying awake is cutting into my sleep time. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, I thought it was just a very cute episode. Um, The idea of Kagura can't sleep, so she obviously goes to Kentucky for help and... (laughs) everything she does just keeps her awake further and you could tell that she's just tired she's at that point of tired where she's just like saying whatever and <laughs> it's clearly delirious as well <laughs> really good really cute and uh yeah that's episode 153 and that's it for gintama this week next week we will actually cover the five more which is 156 157 158 and 159 and i will also watch 154 155 and we'll, i will i will we can cover those and talk about those as well i'll go over them and we can talk about them so zen <laughs> so zen doesn't have, he can work he, worry on the new ones that he's actually seen <laughs> and i can worry <laughs> on the older ones and we can talk about those but Either way, it's good to go back to Gin, uh, to Gintama and watching it again because uh, after dealing with all the work bullshit, it's just kind of nice to just have something silly on yeah, and not it have is. to worry about it. It's like, ah, man, I could just use a good laugh. <laughs> Let's go. So very well done. And that's what we plan to do for next week. So it's time to end the show. And what better way to say it than by saying... You should go over to Zen's channel. If you want to see Zen talk about more Shonen Jump stuff, then you can go over to uh, Zen's channel where he has... I was about to say Shonen Archive, but in manga form. <laughs> but but he, you cover more things than what we do here at Shonen Archive, but also you came first. <laughs> it's Shonen and Chill. <laughs> yes. Uh, you can go check him out there. See, his, uh, see what he has to say about that. And then you can also go to his... Uh, Twitch if you to see his streams, and if you want to see more stuff related to me, 
we got this channel here for you. Hopefully getting up to seeing more. Uh, now that we've caught up for a vast majority. Well, I still need to see it. Now that I actually know my schedule going forward. Because now my work has given me like access to, further access to stuff. So now I can actually see ahead how crazy busy some days are going to be. I can actually plan ahead and see like, okay, this is the actual good day for me to watch, sit down and watch the anime. This is the one where I'm least likely to get screwed over by time. <laughs> so <laughs> next week we should be back and be able to talk about Morgan Tama. And keep on track with what we're going on, which sounds good to me. But that's the end for this week, everyone. As always, if you want to show support for the channel or I guess for the show, you can always leave a like, leave a comment. But in general, just watching is good enough for us. Thank God that Fago is able to hard carry my channel into the algorithm. So really, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you guys don't have to worry. Now that I have my back access to greatness, <laughs> this show can go on forever, baby. <laughs> I don't have to worry about <laughs> anything. Till the end of time. Till the end of time. I get that sweet, sweet gotcha money now. <laughs> on my tax and now that i make money i can tell my taxes oh yeah oh here you go i spent it all technically to make money let's go <laughs> that's the high life everyone and yeah so don't worry about it but yeah if you want to do show support then always as always leaving a comment um and being there and leaving a like it always shows a lot of help and also in general it's nice to see Comments, I think, are the best one, just because I like talking to other people about... Yeah, I like reading comments. It's fun. Yeah, it's cool. I think that's the nicest one. And yeah, that's the end of Shonen Archive this week. We'll be back for more good stuff. Until next time, say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out. Goodbye. <laughs>